Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 22, Once Upon a Zeppelin. The Return of Iron Will. Yep, and both my initial guesses were wrong. Thought we might be facing the return of Princess Spike, and that it was going to be a pirate ship. Yeah, and it's like, and I didn't quite think that because I happened to look at the thumbnail for the episode which had Iron Will on it so I was like interesting Iron Will's back he could have turned pirate this is technically piracy yeah and he would have done the whole arg thing very well I mean even when he first was over the speakers it was very not what a cruise director would sound like very authoritative and bossy yeah like how Twilight says like hmm that was oddly <laughs> That was Assertive. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It was an enjoyable episode because of all the interactions between Twilight and her family. And we get to see more of the parents. And we get to see what parts ended up going into Twilight from her parents. Like, the detail-orientedness seemed to have come from her father. True. And I'm not quite sure what she got from her mother. Because her mother seems to be a very adventurous type. Maybe that went over to Shining Armor. Probably. Shows seem to like to make the children take after the parent of the opposite gender, for a contrast. Other than your initial thoughts, how did your predictions for the future of the episode evolve? <laughs> well, once it was obvious it wasn't piracy, it was like, oh, manipulation. So they were tricked into coming on the Princess Cruise, because I made a joke that, oh, Princess Cruise Lines, and then that's what it was. Yep. He actually even did the rim shot motion. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that turned out to be what it was. And even if Twilight's parents signed that paperwork, that only obligates them. They cannot legally sign on Twilight or Cadence's behalf. Hmm. Twilight and Cadence were completely off the hook. Yep, they were also completely blindsided. Also... The moment the mom said, who read the fine print? I pointed directly at Twilight. <laughs> she would have read that thing back to front multiple times before a quill even levitated off of its stand. Not to mention that, oh, the parents don't remember what contest they entered? Okay, that screams fraud. Also screams scheme. Fraud, fishing, pick your fraudulent poison, it's there. Uh, I'm a Nigerian prince. Which apparently started out as wanting pants. I'm not remembering the entirety of the scheme, but I know the original one was a newspaper ad by someone asking for pants and like a dollar or something or a penny or whatever the equivalent to a dollar would be back then. So that's where that scheme came from. A lot of the schemes we see in email and on the web actually started as newspaper ad schemes. Well, that used to be a really strong way to manipulate people because people are used to something being in a newspaper as being truthful and they don't pay attention to things like oh this is the advertisement section which can post anything because it's not held to journalistic reporting standards it's just an ad and you only have to spend a couple of cents back then to put a couple of words on a page and if you make the thing small and catchy and only use a couple of words you're not spending much to get a huge return this is why email fraud like this is so prevalent and so out there. This is why you have spam, because it's so cheap for these spammers to send billions of email out to billions of people, and even a 1% return is a huge profit for the amount of effort expended, which apparently is what Iron Will figured out. That, hmm, I can pay for the crews of this handful of family members, and in return get dozens of ponies to pay top dollar for this cruise so they can see their favorite princesses. And even pay for extras, like a raffle. And an autograph session. Also, I would love to look at that schedule in detail that Twilight drew up, because it looked really neat. I myself do like looking at details like that. I actually enjoy building stuff in a spreadsheet. I'm not always super good at it. Like, Ember has helped me with like a little bit of math in one of my spreadsheets. That seems to be one of my strong suits. Someone asked me for help phrasing it as a math question. I get brought over to look at a spreadsheet. I'm like, 
This isn't a math issue. Okay, you led me through the calculation. This is not a math issue. This is a spreadsheet formatting issue. So I went, can you do this, this, and this? She was like, oh my goodness. She's like, well, why is it doing this? I'm like, just do that. That's exactly what I wanted. Most of this episode is really the interaction between Twilight and her family. That's what really makes it for me. Iron Will is just a good framing device to get them all together. Yeah, Iron Will is more the foil to get that family interaction, which I did enjoy. The whole fraud manipulation, all of that, not so much. But there was a good lesson in there of setting boundaries as a public figure and knowing limits and coming up with a work-life balance. Which is a good lesson for the audience and fans of this series to learn because they should treat any of the voice actors with that same level of respect. They also had a character in there who was just a little bit too close. And I like how Twilight put him in his place, but then said, it was a slightly my fault too, but please respect it. And she showed respect to him, which then he showed back to her. Yes, emotional reciprocity. You give what you get. He was being very close and she wasn't pushing away, so he thought the behavior was acceptable. When she was finally pushed too far and snapped at him, he was hurt and withdrew and was ready to run off when she came back in the room. But when she tendered the sincere apology as opposed to the, well, sorry, but if you hadn't been so close, the, I'm sorry, I should have been more clear, please understand. And going back to the beginning with Spike, that was really nice. I like how he's like, you're taking a vacation shove <laughs> like but you're my family too you should be coming what i can't hear you because you're on vacation <laughs> also that all okay i'm gonna neatly pack everything into one suitcase three two one schedule of activities there it is <laughs> showing that spike also knows her very well and i like the design of the zeppelin too very nice it wasn't entirely fitting into my theme of pirate ship i'm like it could still change colors as soon as they get away from Doc. And I'm like, yeah, but really, how do you hold the princesses captive? They're alicorns. They could just fly off at any time. And I love how you pointed that out right after Iron Wheel revealed himself as the whole mastermind behind the thing. And you're like, yeah, well, they could just fly away. And I'm like, well, yeah, but Iron Wheel's going to say something about you're going to disappoint all these people. And Twilight's going to fall for that. Cadence probably won't, and no one else in her family probably will, but Twilight will be like, yeah. And then she's going to overstretch herself, and that's where the conflict's going to come in. But the nice thing is we get to see the interactions with her family along the way, so that's not too bad. Much better than I was expecting it to be as the theme evolved. And she did get to see at least one of the stars in the sky. She just didn't get to see it with her family. And... Also, I think Iron Will could have routed the ship so that they passed the same area on the way back because cruises usually have the same beginning and ending point if they're round-trip cruises. And there's a, another thing, too, about that is the fact that Iron Will does jump off near the end before the cruise actually ended. What's really nice about that, though, is how much Twilight has probably memorized the schedule she could have finished off the cruise and had everything running smoothly so she doesn't even have to <laughs> do anything. Yes, the only thing she would have to take out was anything that was princess related, which apparently did not show on her copy of the schedule. Because mm. otherwise, that would have been a red flag for her. And she would have had access to the captain's cabin, so that's probably where Iron Will kept the rest of this actual schedule. Yes, because with Iron Will jumping off, I guess the goat's driving? I guess. That's a very talented goat. And I love how when it's like, Iron Will's happy, cuts up to him. Mm, and the goat goes crunch right into the side of his cup. Mm -hmm. Which, if you looked, was a pineapple cup. So oh. it was probably actually fruit. But still, it's funny how the goat goes for the cup. Mm. And I just really like how they handled the parents. They both have their own unique personalities, and it came through a lot. You also saw the connection between the two of them. How much they do love each other, why they've been together for so long, why they're still together. Yeah, it's a nice, solid, established relationship that we haven't really gotten to see much of. Like how he's like, oh, your mother's going to do this. It's going to be so fun. 
he's not annoyed by it. He's like, it's, it's actually going to be fun. I love seeing her go crazy like this. Because she does it in a safe manner. But every time she says relaxing, she actually means adventure. And, ah, uh, the classic bingo. The joke about all old people like bingo. Eh, eh, I'm okay with bingo. Never really played it that much. Except on phones and stuff like that. Oh. We used to have it in school. Because we would have a Friday fun day where you could go to different activities. And bingo was actually really popular because the prizes were donuts. Ooh. I can see why it would be popular. That and or money and or other types of really good food. So I think it's time for the classic question of nitpicks. And I have a feeling we're going to be here a while. Well, I already touched on a lot of them. Yes, I've seen that. But I want to know if you have any more that we may have skimmed over or I ran past by accident. Well, let's see. How about the overall potential danger of Flurry Heart making a stack out of all the other infant ponies? Yeah, did you see the look on Caden's face, too? It's like, I can't believe the parents are allowing this. Seriously. And wow, the parents are all, our children can become best friends with a princess. They can grow up together and hey, we get a cachet into a royal family. Ugh. I know there are people who are that shallow and... Those coming on the princess cruise are more likely to be of that mindset. But really, all of you have that little regard for your children that you are not in the least concerned that a young alicorn is playing dominoes with your children. Actually, it was more like Jenga because they were stacked up. Yes, but she wasn't pulling one from the bottom and putting it on the top. <laughs> that, 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 that's a valid point right there, yeah. And I know that's not normally how you play the actual game of dominoes, but how kids play with dominoes is they stack them up. Or, or they lay them side by side and... Look, I made a star. And then as if it wasn't obvious by that point that the parents were all just about... And then when they all shoved their children right into Flurry Heart's personal space and then some, I mean, she probably got some broken feathers out of that. And the look on Cadence's face as she walked away was like, these people are so crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, my daughter's not getting anywhere near you people. Ah, uh, poor Shining Armor. You would think there would be a potion or an herb or a spell to help with that? Uh, I love his logic when he was on the boat. I'm on the boat and I don't get seasick. So since I'm on the water, I won't get airsick. Because technically I'm in water, not in the air. And Twilight was like, I don't think it works that way. Uh, and dang, her mom was fast. Mm-hmm. She and Rainbow Dash should have a boat race. <laughs> that would actually be kind of neat to see. Or maybe she should be driving the Wonder Boat instead of Spitfire. <laughs> Reference to Sasame-chan's comments and because of how awesome he is. Check! Ah, <laughs> uh, so back to the episode. And... Did Iron Will sell all of those pony cosplay accessories or were some of those homemade because some of them looked identical, like they were mass produced, but some looked like they were very unique, so. Hmm, I almost thought some of them were like leftover from the episode with the book. They could be, but only Twilight ones, because Cadence didn't do journal entries. Mm. And there were Cadence cosplays as well. That mask one was just creepy. Yes. The thing is, while fans do dress up as characters, you rarely dress up as the actor themselves. So this is more akin to someone dressing up as Princess Diana while she was still alive than someone dressing up as a character. Yeah, that's a good comparison. <clears throat> like, I didn't even think about that. Well, because we think of Twilight as a character, because we know we're watching a television series. Mm. But in the world of Equestria, she's a real person. So what we see in the fandom, well, of course, we can dress up like Twilight Sparkle, fictional dress up like Tara Strong. Yeah, basically dressing up as Twilight Sparkle is okay. Dressing up as her actor, not so much. That's more like the creepy stalker, which the guy was almost like. 
Yes, Star Tracker was very much like the uh, obsessed fan. The, mm -hmm. the one that's the slightly dangerous one that is really creepy to see in the real world. Though I do love after he was set straight, he started respecting her boundaries. He was staying at a good distance. He defended her when it came up in a very good way. Because you can defend someone in a bad way. Yes. Thank you, Internet. It's just all the trappings surrounding the family interaction is what's really interesting about this episode. But the enjoyable part of the episode is the family interaction, as I said before. And all the little things they did, like how... I actually don't remember his name now. The father's name. How the father kissed the mother on the cheek after she came out of the barrel. And come on, she's sopping wet. Her mane's a mess. He's like, hi, dear. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how he politely puts his hoof out to help her up. Mm -hmm. Little things like that. There's a, a lot of little interactions that really show how much he cares for her and how much he respects her and what he what she likes to do and how much she respects what he likes to do. Yes, all those interactions are very well handled. There's a lot of subtlety in there that really makes it feel real, that they're honest interactions. Also the little thing when they're first boarding the boat, I expected them to cut right away from Shining Armor, right after he said, oh, I don't get airsick. I expected them to cut right to him being airsick. I was expecting that too. So it was almost kind of nice that they didn't do that because we were expecting it. So now the real question is, will the next episode have a follow-up subplot of all the stuff Twilight has to untangle that Spike handled while she was gone? Or did Spike learn his lesson in Princess Spike well enough that he handled all the correspondence and everything quite well? Hmm. I don't know if we're actually going to see that, but it would be kind of interesting to see or at least get hints at in the next episode when another story is going on. Yeah, well, that's why I said subplot. Hmm. So, I think we've covered everything we wanted to talk about? Mm-hmm. So, what are your final thoughts in this episode? Really enjoyed the family interactions. Kind of happy that my idea of it being a pirate ship wasn't true because we wouldn't have had all that great family interaction in a more hyped up prison situation. Mm. as opposed to a manipulative situation. I'd like to reiterate that Twilight Sparkle was in no way contractually obligated to Iron Will until she shook hooves with him. And Iron Will also technically violated that contract because she said, I will do what you want as long as my family gets to do what they want. She is a member of her own family. By missing the stars, Iron Will voided the contract. Mm. I love the little details they tossed in for how the parents are interacting and how Twilight knew little details about her family. Like, oh, you really like bingo? Here it is. And how she didn't quite schedule it in the over the barrel kind of thing, over the Niagara Falls thing and tell her mom, went, ooh, that looks interesting. And she's like, oh yeah, okay. there's enough space right here. <laughs> so she knew to leave space in the calendar, I should say in the day planner for her mom. That there was some stuff that was scheduled, but she left a block of time for, okay, when we find the other activity, it can fit in right there. Just the interaction with her family is what made this episode really enjoyable. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 22, Once Upon a Zeppelin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, watch other videos, rewatch this one. D do we have a lot of rewatchability value? I I'm not sure. C can you rewatch the video and let us know? Oh, we also have lots of other videos you can check out. A lot of them are pony themed, but we do branch out into other things. So take your pick, check a playlist. We have them mostly organized. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, Google+, a couple Mastodon servers, and I think a few other places. If you really enjoy Lux's art and have an idea that you'd like to take out of your head and have him put on digital paper, so to speak, he does take commissions. Please check the link below for pricing and availability. We also accept outright donations. We have both a Patreon and Coffee page for your consideration. Patreon starts at a dollar. Dollar includes monthly sketches, while the higher tier gets access to high quality versions of more detailed images. Coffee works in increments of three and has an opportunity for you to leave a message and get a message back from Lux. And well, since I haven't started a coffee for Amber's reading room, you 
could throw your bits that direction and make a suggestion and I'll use the money to try to get the book. Thanks again for listening.